lovely frosty fam it's me karen frost here at nail decadence welcome welcome one and all so in this video we're going to be doing a navy blue gold type mustard yellow set and as always i mix my own colored acrylics and if you would like to know how i custom mix my acrylic colors i will have a link in the cards to the video as you just saw flashed up on the screen there um yeah a link to the video of how i make my acrylic colors so go and check that out if you are interested and of course showing you all the other stuff that i'm using this navy blue magic glitter from smiley's has so much in it it's got these little moons and these little stars and they're holographic and it's just beautiful really cute glitter mix but yeah so anyway just showing you everything that i'm going to be using so how is everyone doing i hope you're all doing well well as well <laughs> as well as you can be under the circumstances things are still a bit crazy in the world that we are currently living in but uh, we do what we can don't we eh? um, I mentioned in other videos if you are struggling with your mental health do reach out to someone talking does help um, bottling things up isn't good for you so yeah I'm always here if anyone needs a chat um, but you know talk to your friends and family get some things off your chest don't don't bottle it up because this these are unprecedented times no one's ever gone through what we're going through right now it's it, it's a bizarre situation and it takes its toll you can soldier on as best you can but it does take its toll you know anyway on with the video so i'm doing a reverse french but i'm doing it in a very sharp lined blocky kind of shape so it's all squared off so I'm going to use my craft knife to just cut in those sharp lines that I'm after rather than file it in as you can see I just want to build up my little wall to be able to butt my colors up to it I'm going to be doing it's it's a it's like a 3d french with acrylic only because when most people do the 3d french they use gel polish because it gives it a really deep effect but i i've tried it before i've got one a video of doing the 3d french with just acrylic um i'll also link that in the cards it's not the best video it does blur it's yeah it's not the best quality video which was really disheartening and i'm really sorry that the camera goes out of focus so much during that video but it's basically what i'm doing here is what i did in that video so i was basically putting the color the next acrylic color that i'm using up against that nail bed color but i'm only putting it up in a thin layer really thin layer that way you get the depth perception so i will cap it in clear that color before i move on to the next color and that's where you get that that perception of depth it's because you've not filled that entire area with gel polish you've only done well i'm not doing gel polish at all i'm doing it with acrylic but it's the same principle you keep the layer thin therefore you get that shadowing which happens um, most people don't want shadowings in, in their in their French but with the 3D French that is exactly what you want it's that's how you get that perception of depth so I will now cap that navy color in clear acrylic build my wall fairly high because I'm going to be butting another color up to it and that's how you get that 3D French effect um, all I can say is if you're doing it like I do with just pure acrylic you really do have to keep it really thin um, I haven't kept it the, the, the acrylic that I've butted right up against that wall of cover pink I've not kept it as thin as I did in my 3D French video because I, I actually wanted a line around the a thicker line 
around the cover pink I, it's really hard to describe it in words what I mean but I didn't just want a very thin line I wanted a slightly thicker line around of navy blue around that cover pink and then to drop off into the depth and oh it, I'm struggling with my words here to explain what I mean but you will see at the end when I file it in what I mean so I'm going to do the same thing with the mustard yellow again I'm doing a thicker line so my um, wall that I'm butting up against I'm, I'm putting the yellow thicker along that line if you want you know the, the the big drop off then you would use less acrylic up against that wall to get a thinner line but I needed a thicker line for um, the design that I wanted to do it's because I'm going to be adding some gold um, paint well gel paint gel polish on the lines later on at the end but yeah there was a reason for it and I've just totally tried to explain it in a really confusing way and I'm really sorry for what I've said so far, it's confused the heck out of you. Um, yeah, I tried. <laughs> I went all around the houses and around the world as usual. I'm really bad at explaining things, aren't I? Oh, oh well. Anyway, so once I have made my wall, I've actually made it a bit thicker now, as you can see. So the thicker you make the wall that's butted right up against the previous wall the thicker line of color you will get before you get your drop off into the depth perception so yeah there was a reason why i was doing it this way if you don't want a thick line around each color then keep what you're butting up against the walls really super 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 thin like a wash of color and then you will you'll get the drop off immediately if that makes sense anyway I kept the yellow and I didn't use my craft knife to cut it in this time so I'll just let that set up whilst I move on to the ring finger and on the ring finger I'm doing an ombre now this yellow was so opaque and so packed full of color it was really difficult to um, ombre it so I will faff quite a lot with this ombre as you will see soon as I continue on it's um mm. <laughs> it was a pain in the butt to say the least so navy and mustard yellow are really not easy to ombre but I get there eventually as you see I'll just to and fro and I'm keeping these layers super super Thin. I'm using the tiniest of beads to get my ombre the way I'd like it to be and yeah that that way I can cap it and I won't file it away because I don't want to spend all that time perfecting that ombre as best I can get it to only file into it and ruin it so yeah keep your layers as thin as possible and now I've added my cuticle bead of the cover pink and I'm also blending that into the yellow and as you can see it's not blending into that yellow at all so I will then go in with other beads and go back and forth between all three colors and get that ombre to work the way I'd like it to it wasn't as good as I wanted it but at I got to a certain point and thought oh this is taking too long I'm spending too much time on this I'm done it's staying as is <laughs> but I do keep going for a while before I get to that point as you can see I'm just adding teeny 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 beads of that cover pink and just trying to blend it into that yellow and it really doesn't want to blend into that yellow even though I'm using slightly wetter beads and everything you know all my little tricks that I've, I've told you all about and yeah yeah I'm still faffing with the ombre yeah still going and yeah I really couldn't get it the way I wanted it to go it didn't look too bad in the end but yeah I gave up by this point I'd had enough it's like yeah I'm done not messing with this anymore <laughs> so on to the middle finger I'm doing the mustard yellow color as you can see full nail of that I'm still keeping my layer thin because I will be capping this because I'm, I'll be adding some stickers and bits and bobs so I want to keep this as thin as possible so that I can cap it in clear acrylic and not file any of my 
um, embellishments away because we don't want that of course so I just want a nice layer that is opaque but thin so you'll see I'm just patting and pressing and keeping it as thin as possible these are not big beads that I'm using at all I suppose you could do it in one bead or, or straight the way down the nail but um, yeah I work in smaller beads most of the time on the little finger I'm doing a full nail of the navy colour I love this mix that I made this has so many sparkles in it it's a really pretty sparkly navy blue colour that I mixed love it well, I only made a really small amount of it so yeah I won't be happy when I run out of that because I'm going to have to try and make it again and um, that'll be a pain in the butt <laughs> but it's a beautiful blue though that shimmer is gorgeous so yeah keep that neat around that cuticle area because as we all know you get that on the skin it's a pain in the butt so I was just trying to neaten up that cuticle area adding a tiny little bead in that corner there make sure it's as neat as I can get it and I kept that very thin because I'm adding a layer of the glitter over the top this glitter has got so much in it and my camera is really going to struggle to focus on these glitter particles it can't cope it's just too much sparkles and as you can see it's totally out of focus it can't cope seriously look it can't <laughs> like it's too much too much sparkles for it to handle it's really beautiful those little moons and stars are just so holographic they're awesome and it's got the multi-cut navy blue metallic glitters as well it's just a really pretty mix i love smileys for my glitter mixes she sarah does some lovely glitter mixes a lot of my glitters are from smileys right so i've gone back to that middle finger that has set up now and i'm using some of these stickers these lv stickers louis vuitton um, I didn't realize these were not chemical resistant and you'll see what happens in a minute oh I was so upset <laughs> but yeah I'll put these on and then I'm going to encapsulate them so I just give them a good push down with my finger make sure they are stuck down and then I'm using a thin amount of acrylic to stick on some of these cuffs but I'm not using them as cuffs I am putting them around that circle just to give it a little I don't know it's fancy doing it I don't know why I thought of doing it but I did and that's what I'm doing and then I will encapsulate that and hold it in place so I put a small amount of clear acrylic on to stick those cuffs in place and then I encapsulate it with a bigger bead of acrylic and then carry on encapsulating the rest of the nail this is why I kept my layers thin because those cuffs are really quite thick so if I'd have made my ombre too thick um, there would be a chance of me ending up filing into those cuff pieces which wouldn't be nice don't want to file away into those gold pieces because then they'd turn to silver and it just wouldn't look nice so yeah I made sure to keep those layers thin so that I could really give it a good layer of clear acrylic that way I don't file into those pieces so I'm just patting and pressing and shaping as best I can with my brush so that I don't have too much filing to do at the end and I'll add as many beads as it takes so onto that middle finger I'm going to encapsulate that and as you can see the monomer as I brushed the nail over with the monomer the gold started coming off the stickers and I was not impressed so I just grabbed my craft knife quickly took that sticker off because it was totally wrecked the other two weren't so bad but that LV one mm -mm, it looked it looked bad so I'm just putting on another LV sticker and this time when I place my acrylic over it I'm not going to brush it over with monomer first I'm just going to place a bead of acrylic right over it and not rub it if if that makes sense because if I keep brushing over it I'm going to pull the gold off again so I'm just adding blobs of clear acrylic over it to just protect it before I finish capping the rest of the nail that way I don't brush away the gold color of it anymore oh what a palaver 
I had no idea that the monomer would have rubbed the gold off the stickers. N none. I mean, they're nail stickers. I expected them to work like a nail sticker and not, yeah, disintegrate. But oh well, is what it is. Fortunately, it was wasn't too difficult to just scrape it off and put a new sticker on so yeah beware of these stickers um probably should really test them out with monomer first but i suppose if you just add like the blob of acrylic like i did clear acrylic over the top of it to just protect it before you cap the rest of it it's probably it'll be all right yeah because it looks okay now you see the lv it looks fine now so it does make a difference to just get that blob on which just protects it and because you're not wipe, rubbing and wiping it off you're not swiping the color away so yeah always a good idea to just blob it on <laughs> so I'll let that one set up and move to the little finger and cap all that beautiful glitter try and tuck my cuticle bead behind that glitter to protect it so that I don't file it away when it comes to my cuticle filing and I will cap for that now adding my shape and structure with my clear acrylic as usual I only use my colors for color purposes and then I will add my shape strength and structure with my clear acrylic many reasons why I do it but yeah it saves your colors it's the strongest acrylic there is the more clear you've got the stronger your nail is going to be basically and I just like the glass effect you can certain acrylics are colored acrylics you can build an entire nail with them I never do that because I like that layer of clear over the top I just like the glassy effect it gives so that's personal preference it's up to you how you would like to do your nails so I'm going back to that index finger and I'm going to file in that 3d French um, the next band of color as it were so this wall I will file into and get it nice and sharp and it was getting really awkward to hold it and my hands were cramping up so you're gonna see me switch right there to my e-file to just take the stress off my fingers I was struggling with holding my um, hand file so I just grabbed a this is like a, a type of under the nail cleaner cuticle type bit and I'm just basically sharpening up that wall the same I would do with the hand file so it's the same principle just doing it with that little e-file bit and then finish off and make sure it's nice and level with the hand file because obviously it's that little e-file bit although it was straight it was quite small and I didn't want any variance in the wall so to make sure it was totally flat I just went over it with the hand file just a little bit to make sure and now I will dampen that nail down so that I can fill in the blue for the next um, layer of color so thin again very very thin you need this as thin as thin as thin as possible on the nail so that you get that perception of depth because you do have to have quite a bit of clear so that it, you are looking down into the nail kind of thing so keep this um, this layer very thin and when you're butting it up against the wall again keep it as thin 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 otherwise otherwise you just don't get the effects if you build it too thick yeah you just you won't get the effect of the 3d it's all about ratios and thickness kind of thing mm. it's really hard to explain how to do and what is involved in a 3d French but thankfully you can see what I'm doing <laughs> so even if my words don't make sense you can see what my brush is doing <laughs> so once I'm happy with the coverage and opaqueness of that I will cap that area with the clear acrylic and this nail it looks horrendous I yeah trust the process trust the process it is a bit of a mess and you know I've totally lost the shape of the nail and it looks really bulky and lumpy bumpy but it that satisfaction of when you file it oh and reveal those lines 
oh, it's worth it. <laughs> so I'm just making sure I have got enough acrylic on that nail so that my shape and structure is there because we want it to be strong nail. Now I'll look at all the nails compared to each other, make sure that they are similar. And now that that has hardened, I will file to reveal those lines. Look at that. You see the lines are coming through and it's that satisfaction. Now, can you see what I mean now that I'm filing it? How I've got a thicker band of colour right up towards the surface and then it drops off into the clear. That's why I made it slightly thicker on each um, colour band so that I, it's just the way I wanted it. I wanted a thicker band of colour before it dropped off into the clear and I'm also because I'm, I'm going to be doing some like I said some gold line work um, afterwards so that's why I wanted a thicker band of colour there before it dropped off into you know nothing kind of thing with the depth of the 3D French and it's a really cool effect it's it's a pain in the butt because it's it does take some time to do I wouldn't do a 3D French on every nail that would take forever it is a time-consuming thing but the effect is really cool so if you're doing it like this on just one nail on, on a set you can to and fro like I did between the layers and it, it doesn't it won't take you as long to deal with it that way so yeah it's a cool effect though it really is so now i've finished filing that nail in i will add my clear acrylic to the back third to get my apex in but before that i'm adding one of these um their little metal alloy diamonds they're just so cute but i wanted to encapsulate that in Yes, I could have encapsulated that in before I added the blue and stuff. Um, but I wanted to make sure that when I was filing in the lines of the 3D French that I wouldn't file into that alloy. So to make sure that didn't happen, that's why I didn't put that in first and just put it in afterwards and then capped it. Yes, it's a bit of a faff and it is a longer process to do that because then I'm going to have to wait for this to set up before I can start filing the rest of the nails kind of thing. But for me to have that assurance to know that I wouldn't file into it when I was um, doing the 3D French, it made sense to me to cap it afterward, you know, to put it in and then cap it after I'd revealed my 3D French lines. So I hope, I hope that makes sense to you, but yeah, it made sense to me. So now, yeah, making sure the nail is the right thickness to compare it to the other nails, just like I did before with all the other ones because I don't want one nail thicker than all the rest because that would look really weird. So look at them all together, make sure they are similarly, similarly shaped. And there's a side profile for you. See, they're not too thick. We don't want big thick nails, no, no, no. So I've let that set up a little bit and now I am going to do my filing. So for my frosty filing freaks, we have lots of filing for you. Oh yes, I know who you are. Don't lie, you're, you're a frosty filing freak. I know you are. <laughs> For my frosty filing freaks, we, we have to have filing every so often in a, in a video. You know, has to be done. If you are not a frosty filing freak, please feel free to skip ahead. I will put a timestamp in the video here somewhere um, to where the filing ends if you want to skip through but yeah for those who would like to watch here we go so first things first I decided to go around that cuticle with this very tapered thin cuticle bit it's a really cool bit but and I was just trying it out kind of thing and I wasn't too keen on it I wasn't too confident with that bit it's not it's quite it's not one that I've really used much before so it takes a bit of getting used to so I just did that with that cuticle bit and now I'm just using a fine barreled uh, carbide bit to just debulk and just shape up the nails a little bit, remove any lumps and bumps. I mean there's not a huge, huge amount of filing to do. 
so I'm just sort of evening out the surface and contouring the nail a bit more with the e-file so you'll see I'll, I'll go up and down all, all along the barrel of the nail I'll go underneath sort out the under arch as you saw then sort out the side walls a little bit and kind of blend that cuticle area into a slope up to the apex and then down towards the free edge just yeah contouring the nail as I go and I'll stop and look and I'll keep stopping and looking just making sure that that nail is going to plan and move on to the next nail same again just going down the body of the nail right down the barrel sorting out that under arch a little bit it will need refining with the hand file but if I do do it with the e-file then I've got less hand filing to do and like I said I was having trouble with my hands that day so I did need to use my e-file quite a bit yeah, so it makes sense to use it I did a bit of the free edge there again just pulling down right down the body of the nail and here I will just refine things with my hand file so I'll do the side walls and the free edge get them nice and sharp and straight underneath that under arch and then side wall and then I'll do the next side of the nail so again under the under arch then the side wall and then I'll sort out that free edge square it off nice and neatly on a nice sharp square so same again on the next day that uh, next nail next day <laughs> I the next nail I mean of course so same again side wall side wall under arch under arch free edge and I'm doing the free edge first on this now for some reason don't know why but I did and again side wall under arch side wall under arch again and then I will buzz right over the surface of the nail so I'll go up one side around the cuticle area down the other side of the nail contouring as I go and then I will go straight down the middle of the nail in a violin motion and contour the rest of the nail just to make sure it is nice and smooth and blended and nice and rounded not um, not any blocky ridges or anything and it's that make sure it's not too thick at the free edge I don't like a thick three free edge at all I like it to be no thicker than a credit card so yeah I do pay attention so I'll you'll see me lift up the nail and look straight down the barrel to make sure that one the nail is even and is a nice arch right the way round from side wall to side wall but also to make sure that it's um, not too thick on the free edge look at your nail from all angles it's so so important because just looking at the nail head on you will not see any inconsistencies in your shaping until you turn that nail to the side or you look down the barrel and then you'll see any inconsistencies in your shape and that's why you need to look at it from all angles it's so 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 important it really is and you see I stop and I look and I look at all the nails together and I make sure that my shapes are all consistent with each other the nails are a group they are not individuals so they do have to be in the same family you know you want the nails to look similar so that your set is cohesive and uniform and that's how you do it you have to keep stopping and looking and there's no point going hell for level with your hand file and then noticing that you've tapered one nail way too much and the others are much thicker because that'll be a pain in bucks so then you'd have to do all the others to match it yeah so keep stopping and looking and you'll see so i'm just giving them a quick buff over with a buffer remove any scratches and then I'll remove the dust and now this is where I'm doing the painting that I mentioned so I'm just using a gold uh, gel paint and this is why I did the blue and the yellow a thicker line because I knew I wanted to add the gold I just wanted to tie in the gold with the other nails you know so I decided I would go along the lines with this gold gel paint like I said I'm trying to keep them it not too thick but also not too thin 
So I'm using a, a thicker liner brush because I wasn't going to make them super, super thin. And this is not, I will say, I, I, I can't recommend this gel paint. It's nowhere near as opaque as I'd like it to be. And it's quite thick. Um, yeah, I've not found a good gel paint yet. SPD London have brought some out. I've not tried them yet, so I probably will get some of those and, and give them a go and uh, let you guys know what they're like. But in, from what I've seen of them, they actually look really, really good and the packaging is really cute. So yeah, I'll probably grab some of those and, and give them a whirl because these, um, I think they're Savvyland ones or something. They're not, they're not great. I wouldn't recommend them. Nah, not impressed, but it's what I've got, so it's what I'm using. And you all know I've got really shaky fingers and hands, so I don't know why I thought it would be a good idea for me to hand paint, hand paint straight lines <laughs> when I've got shaky hands. But you know, I'm, I'm getting there. Yeah, I've got to take my time and do it really slowly. <laughs> I do get there eventually. So once I've finished my lines, I will cure that, of course, to hold it in place. Nearly there. Just finishing that line. Yep. Cure that in place. There we go. And now it's time to bling it, baby. Oh, yes. Who doesn't like a bit of crystal play? gotta have some crystals so as usual my SBD London no wipe diamond gel to apply my crystals my flat backs I'm also going to use that to apply that cuff as you can see so I'm just gonna faff about getting that cuff exactly where I want it around that cuticle area I'm also going to add a couple of caviar beads at the end of it as well at each end of it should I say as, as you can see now and once I'm happy with the placement I will flash cure that in place as well of course because I don't want it to move anywhere and I don't want to knock it and move it out of place so yeah I flash cure a lot with things on the middle finger I'm going to do a diagonal zigzaggy type line on this nail of crystals so i've got these navy blue crystals they're really cute well so they're not cute they're really pretty so i wanted to use some of those to tie in the navy blue as you can see i've applied my diamond gel my spd london diamond gel in a line and then obviously added the crystals and then i'm doing another line I love this SPD London thing because it's got a nib as well as a brush it's so cool it can be so precise with the nib and you can also brush on precisely as well love it such a clever invention so I'm just faffing around with my crystals I wasn't happy with the placement of them in the way they were going up and down in sizes so I just switched it a little bit so that the bigger one was nearer the middle rather than at the side and I'm putting smaller ones at the side instead so good thing about the diamond gel is it it yeah you can faff and place those crystals the way you want them bef and they you know it's not gonna stay in place until you cure it if you're using nail glue you can't really re adjust them once they're stuck on they're stuck on so I do like the diamond gel for that because I am a faffa and I do change my mind and with glue you have no chance to change your mind once you stick it on it's stuck on so yeah I like I like the the flexibility of using a gel to ad adhere crystals so I'm just adding a few of the caviar beads in between the crystals just on one side I'm not doing it on both sides though so just down one side I'm adding the crystals in between uh, adding the caviar beads in between the crystals so I just added a bit more diamond gel for them to stick into I'm just adding them on 
I do like caviar beads but they're so tiny and, and a bit of a pain in the butt. They're so time consuming to add them I must say. But I liked it, it added to the whole golden navy thing that I had going on so I'll flash cure that in place. And now it's time to top it off and keep it tough. Favourite bit, top coat. Like, top coat this nail and you'll see that 3D French come to life. When I top coat that little finger and that glitter pops. Oh, stunning. Love that glitter. So as we are at the end of the video, I'd like to say thank you ever so much for watching this video and visiting my channel and spending some of your precious time with me. I can't thank you enough. If you have enjoyed this video in any way, shape or form, Please feel free to click that like button. I'd appreciate it if you'd let me know that you have enjoyed watching. If you have not already subscribed, go ahead and click that subscribe button and join the Frosty fam. I'd love to have you. And if you feel like it, you are most welcome to leave me a comment. I'm more than happy to talk to you. So that's all I have for this time, peeps. You take care now and I'll speak to you all again soon. Bye for now. Cansada la vida, porque sin ti no va nada. Bien, echando sal a la herida, el limón al aguardiente. Yeah, despechada mejor, ya que si da me arroja en todo lo que toco. El problema es peor, mucho siento por vos, pero se me ve poco. Yeah, dime qué vamos a hacer si cuando tomo todo lo malo se va. Y a la mano se, ya me doy cuenta que no soy olvidada. Dime qué vamos a hacer, sé cuando tomo todo lo malo se va. Y a la mano se, ya me doy cuenta que no soy olvidada. Solo un traguito nada más, que sobria ya no puedo ni verte, ni verte, ya ya. Para no acordarme de nada, pero después regresa más fuerte al verte. Tal vez lo que pasará, que lo recuerdo me matará. Someday soon, I'm gonna make it. Yeah.